All right, hey everybody, and uh, welcome to the 90 Minute Art Challenge. My name is Bobby Chu, and I also have on here my co host, the amazing, the incredible Masei Saki. Hey, Masei. Yeah, everyone. I'm excited for today's topic. <laughs> and that's why I was like, you know, we should just get straight into this. So, for everybody tuning in, we're going to be doing five one minute poses, five two minute poses, five five minute poses, five ten minute poses, and then we're done. Okay? And that's the artist, uh, the 90 minute art challenge. So, here we go with the very first pose starting now. One minute, one minute. And I guess for those who don't know or who is who are tuning in for the first time, the reason why I'm super excited is because I'm a, I love to go rock climbing. It's my, besides art, it is my other main hobby. So it's, it's one of those things where I just tell everyone like, ah, oh, you got to try, you got to try. It's, <laughs> it's so fun. And it like, for me personally, it's helped a lot in my art just because of like, kind of like the, the mindset that you start building when you start climbing. Um, and it's kind of like, um, so art, everyone does something, uh, you know, the way they draw, the way they think, it's all different. But there are some fundamental skills that you have to learn in order to do certain moves. But depending on like, um, like for me, for example, I'm very short and the way I climb is very, very different from someone who's even like, you know, half a foot taller than me. Um, so it's kind of like seeing how other people do it and then trying your own, you know, way of doing it. And then you kind of figure out like, new stuff and yeah it's just like really fun and I don't know I guess because I like both art and climbing I like to try to find ways to um connect them well also a big and that goes for like any any hobby as well like any other hobby also a big plus is the the health benefits you know a lot of people especially artists we talk about arm problems all the time right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm rock climbing i that's probably why i should go rock climbing because i never hear that kind of stuff from you or very very rarely anyways um definitely in the beginning you you're so sore that it's hard to hold a pencil um it sounds bad but it's kind of just like letting your body get used to you know like holding something really hard and like you know all that so it's a it's an uphill but then after a while it gets a lot easier also just a little more housekeeping here we do have some text on the bottom of the screen one is you can ask questions to slido um if you go to slido.com hashtag 90 mac you can ask your question there also uh we are currently connecting through discord through the lightbox expo discord channel lightbox expo is the event to go to to find and to meet the artists behind your favorite things your favorite movies video games etc um yeah and you can join us in there and join in the conversation live for those of you in discord if you have any questions you don't even need to ask you don't even need to wait you could just ask you know feel free And uh, on that note, we are now going on to the fourth one-minute pose. Okay, and don't be discouraged if your drawings are not looking too hot. You know, they're not supposed to look hot for these ones especially. These ones especially are really to help warm up. I'm not concerned. I'm, I'm like expecting bad drawings. Um, or quote-unquote bad drawings. But you know what's a bad drawing to me, Masse? You could probably guess. Right. It's when you don't put <laughs> in the effort, right? Yeah. A good drawing is when you put in the effort. It doesn't matter how it turns out. It just matters mm -hmm. how much effort you put in. 
that kind of thinking will lead you to good drawings later. This is actually not too bad. I thought this would be a little bit more difficult for for me. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's got a lot of um, different fun poses. Mm -hmm. All right, number five of the one minute poses. is very interesting and when you learn figure drawing um it's it's interesting to like think about center of gravity so like in life drawing you learn that a lot and then you try to apply it and then once you start climbing you have to constantly think of like um, where your center of gravity is because um you want to know exactly where to put your body in certain positions so that you can efficiently get up it's not all about like arm like ah, ah, you know muscles it's it's about like putting yourself in a position where your center of gravity can rest on like one foot so that you can kind of rely on that instead of like holding up your body with your arms so um interesting yeah that makes yeah. perfect sense actually never really thought about that and also it's fun because you get to see other people's like muscles <laughs> when they're climbing. <laughs> so it's like free life drawing. Okay, so now we're getting into two minute poses, everybody. This is the first of the two minute poses. Look at this pose, huh? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. First thing I was thinking is like this big swoop. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear it. I hear that. Do a little, my own version of that swoop. Oh, by the way, um, just want to give a little plug to something exciting this weekend. Saturday is going to be uh, the Schoolism webinar with, um, with Noah Kolchek. Noah has been an art director at Pixar for quite a long time now, I believe. Actually, don't quote me on it, but I, I think I... He might be actually doing production design too now. I, you know what? I'm not sure. So. But anyways, um, top of the line, uh, top of his game. And I'm really interested to kind of learning from him as well this weekend. It's free for all of the uh, Schoolism subscribers. So if you got in on the uh, winter sale or you've subscribed to Schoolism, you'll get a email invite tomorrow to register for the uh, free webinar with the uh, with Noah I've seen his did you already mention oh, oh so sorry sorry go ahead oh, I was gonna ask did you already mention what kind of uh, topic he's gonna teach color colors telling story through color and all sorts mm -hmm. of other things aspects about color um, oh. yeah Here's the next one. Oops. There we go. Two minutes starting now. This looks crazy scary to me. Like, do you think you would ever do climbing like this? Like, have you? Um, so this type of climbing is called lead climbing, um, where you the rope isn't set up, so you have to bring it up with you and set it up. So pretty much as you climb, you're clipping in, you climb, you're clipping in. Um, so that personally, I haven't done yet. That looks crazy scary. A lot spookier. Oh yeah, uh, because like, if you don't clip into the next one, you still have like a lot of rope s since the last clip. So then you have to think like, okay, that's the amount you're gonna fall plus more because of oh you know God. the the weight that you're bringing down, and. Um, mm. But honestly, I think it's one of those things, those sports where as long as you know safety and like basics, it's probably not too bad. <laughs> but mm. <laughs> it's definitely a thrill. I have to think about that one. 
<laughs> yeah, because okay, like... Missy, quick question. Yes. What has been your most uh, challenging or scary climbing experience? Ooh, good one. Um, nothing extreme yet. Uh, at least not outdoors, but indoors. I went to Seattle and I went to a gym called the Seattle Seattle Boulder uh, Club or I forgot what it's called. Um, anyways, there is like this one that was like super high. I think it was like. 15 no how, how tall am i 5 10 15 maybe like 18 to 20 feet high and that's like the tallest bouldering wall i've climbed and um i've fallen off that without Yikes. like because i slipped and when i was coming down i thought i could land properly but i buckled in and like my face went into my knee and i like hit the side of my cheek Luckily, not my eye, but, um, you know, no bruise, no nothing. It was just like a very spooky experience, but, uh, that's probably the, the worst I've had and hopefully it will stay that way. Yikes. Yeah, please <laughs> stay safe. <laughs> that sounds just scary hearing it. Um, any kind of rock climbing accident sounds scary to me. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of learning how to fall. Because um, a lot of people have the first instinct of like sticking their arms out, and that's like the worst thing that you could do. Oh. So you, what you want to do is you want to fall on your feet, collapse down to your butt, and then fall, like roll backwards. Oh. Because there's many times where people do that mistake of like sticking their arms out and then, yeah. I love how we're learning about the subject that we're drawing. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I can go on about climbing. I've also done ice climbing before too that in um, sounds Iceland. Sounds even scarier. Yeah, that that was pretty fun. Like an iceberg, or um, like a bunch glaciers. of ice that was. Okay, a glacier. Yeah. That was pretty wild. Yeah, that sounds wild. I must say a question. Uh, who introduced you to uh, climbing, actually? Or is there a story maybe to it? Oh, yeah. Um, so when I started working at Imaginism, there was another girl uh, who used to work with us, and she was rock climbing. Oh, right. And so she's the one who introduced it to me, and then ever since then, I just, like, got hooked. And uh, I've been climbing ever since. And that's also where I met my boyfriend. So, you know, when you have a partner who does the same hobby as you, you just kind of, like, stick with it. Oh, you both met uh, as rock climbing? Yeah. <laughs> That's sweet. You're staring at his scary. muscles and uh, going, yeah, oh, yeah. that's really interesting. <laughs> the scapula and all that stuff. And then he was like, oh, wow, yeah. this girl really likes me. <laughs> exactly. And you're just like the muscles that analyzing anatomy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's that. And then, yeah, we just got along. That's awesome. It really does help when you um, have something that you share in common, right? Like an activity to do yeah, together. Yeah, and I bet that's the same for you and Kay. It's like you guys push each other and like seeing each other work. It's like that must be a pretty big motivation. It, yeah, I wonder. I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> like we kind of stay out of each other's business artistically right we don't really push each other that much because it's like um i don't know we i guess we don't really have to mm. so we got to do it anyways you know it's not right. like rock climbing where it's like well if you didn't go rock climbing it's okay there's <laughs> not going to be somebody yelling at you how come you didn't do your deliverables or at least in the beginning of your careers, would do you feel like um, it helped having 
oh, with yeah. each other. Oh, totally. Well, and then in the beginning, we had、um, we had a few houses like、uh, w- moved into different places and stuff, and had、um, artists living together, right? Like、mm. almost like a weird commune. That was really fun. Okay, here we go. Next one. Number five of the two-minute poses. This one I figured we give ourselves a little bit of a break. Have half a person to draw.、Yeah. <laughs> We have a question from Slido. Yes,、uh, please. Sergio from Chile. These quick studies.、Um, do you take a few seconds before you start analyzing the figure? Yes. So,、uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, totally. I totally take a. F- I take however much time I need.、Um, but I, like, even before starting this one, I would just glance at it and then kind of like figure out what is the objective of this drawing. What should this drawing kind of look like, and then proceed. Uh, do you have any, like, preliminary thoughts before you start sketching, Missy? Um, I think it depends on the time. When it's something as quick as like um like thirty seconds or a minute, I kind of just like go right into it. Yeah.、Um, but once it gets into like the five ten minutes, then I'll I'll try to see like what there is. Um, but I realized what's helped me was um, whatever. Big initial like impression I get of the the image. <clears throat> I try to capture that first, and then kind of like look at it at the same time and try to you know、um, extrapolate certain parts.、Mm-hmm. So there's like a bit of multitasking.、Um, but yeah, definitely analyzing it first will help a lot.、Um, but yeah. I hope that helps. Probably didn't help your drawing too much. Explaining <laughs> all that. <laughs> all right, didn't help mine either. Okay, so there we go. Now we're on to five-minute poses. Time goes by so quick when we're doing these life drawing classes. Oh, by the way, next week it's all about rabbits, everybody. We're gonna be sketching rabbits. That's gonna be fun too. Cause you know what, like there's really cute rabbits, and there's really like ugly looking hares and stuff, right? If you ever、mm-hmm. check them out, so it'll be a nice variety of、uh, cute and almost Alice in Wonderland like kind of weird. Oh, cool! Yeah, I'm excited. Do you know that、uh, you you have actually very like giant rabbits? Oh yeah. A friend of mine had one, which was like humongous. Really, it's like the、I、size of a dog. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know they scream.、Them. Like、uh, usually, you don't hear <laughs> rabbits scream, right? But、um, sorry, morbid little fact here. In the wild, you you can hear them scream when、uh, you know they're getting attacked by wolves and stuff. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, it's very sad. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, what's another more lighthearted kind of fact about bunnies? They have tails, long tails. Yeah, I think Noah shared that.、Yes. Was it Noah? Yeah,、no. she shared like、um, did. this photo where it was such a discovery that they have long curly tails. Yeah, that's a good one. I wonder why it's not like long and sticking out. It's usually just like tucked away, right? Oh, you know what? I forgot to put on the timer. I'm sorry, everybody.、Uh, we can't actually. He- Only the people on YouTube can hear the.、Um... <laughs> the chimes and stuff. So I think maybe I'll set this to. 
yeah, like three and a half minutes, okay? Three and a half minutes, everybody. I was doing so well, getting, you know, so on top of things for the last bunch of poses. Uh, Bobby, I must say, question about yeah. how you are like drawing in the beginning. Do you do you kind of swoop from your elbow, or do you do you, do you find that you use your wrists more, or do you find that you switch sw between, or how do you how are you gonna start? Uh, I don't know. Do you you wear a glove though, Masay? Like I maybe I should get a glove because like my hand can't slide on the monitor because I'm not using a glove. Mm. Oh, it helps a lot. It's like, it's a glove that I got on Amazon. Um, I have to cut off the tips so that my fingers can breathe a bit more. But yeah, it, it helps a lot. Just like being able to effortlessly glide across uh, across the screen. Even even for like Intuos tablets, it helps a lot. And, do um, you use iPad so, with those gloves as well? I do actually, it helps a lot as well. I, I think it's just because like my hands get clammy very quickly when there's like a when it's against the warm monitor mm -hmm. so um and i've seen people like uh do tricks up where they just get like a thin glove from the dollar store and then just like you know cut open this whole section so that your three fingers are exposed um yeah but you know it does help with being able to do more gestural drawings with your whole arm Yeah, lately but, um, I've been uh, using the iPad and my my oh, hand nice. will keep activating, you know, keep drawing stuff or whatever by accident because it's just mm. touching the screen. Yeah, yeah, that definitely, I think it does help a bit. With oh, okay. The, with the glove. Yeah, maybe I'll just get one for that reason. I think for the iPad you can also like adjust how sensitive it is for your uh, fingertips instead of the uh, oh. uh, pencil. Yeah. Actually. Through the, through the iPad settings. Now that you mention it, uh, it's all kind of coming back a little bit. Because um, Nikolai Lockerton in his uh, Procreate class, he, he talks a lot about um, settings and things like that, how he sets up his, his Procreate. And that was one of them. But it's been a while since I took that course. So I kind of forgot. Um, but to kind of go back to the question, I think for real life drawing, when it's on a big uh, newsprint, then I would use my arm more. But when it's digital like this, um, I wouldn't use my whole shoulder to draw. I think it would just like come from the elbow area and mainly the el the wrist as well. Yeah, I, I tend to draw a little bit more with my wrist digitally. It, traditionally, it's heavy on shoulder, like a lot more mm -hmm. of the arm for sure, because it's just easier. Mm -hmm. All right, so five minute pose number one, done. Here's number two. We have a, a live question from Max. I wonder if it works. Max, are you here? Hey, Max. Oh. <laughs> Let me help Max for a bit. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back. In the meantime, there's a question on Slido. What's the secret to get a clear line um, and not be indecisive about them? From Anonymous. To get a clear line. Like a decisive clear line? Yes. Yes. Mm. Just kind of have to go for I think... it. <laughs> no. I don't... Sorry. I think it's practice. Oh, okay. Uh, for... Uh... I think for me, it would just, I would say it's kind of like practice and 
you start to um, pick up certain line quality that you like. Um, and I think this is like one of those things that people don't really want to hear, but it, it is like kind of, you just have to know, like keep doing it and then it's muscle memory and then you start to know like um, what type of line quality you like to put down for certain things, like certain areas. Mm, so it's the reps. Um, yeah, yeah putting like your that. reps. I remember like before life drawing, um, when I was in school, one of my warm up exercises was to draw circles, right? And try to draw a circle as perfect as possible. And then go from there to transitioning to ellipses, like a horizontal ellipse, and then going back to circle and back to like a vertical looking ellipse and so on and so forth. Mm. I used to do that too. That was a really good practice. Yeah, that was for muscle muscle memory as well, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Actually, that, that also reminds me of um, that one class, uh, the figure drawing, not figure drawing, um, drawing people with Viktor Kalvachev. Oh. He gives an exercise where you are literally just drawing a bunch of like lines side by side, but he, he gets you to... Um, Oh, make right. those lines like the same quality but the same space yes and the same like length and although it's very tedious you start to like learn um you know how to move your arm or your wrist hopefully not too much of your fingers but um yeah it's a it's a great exercise to do so that's a good one bobby like yeah lines. i totally remember that that's also on schoolism um yeah i remember taking that and and just being like kind of surprised a bit surprised on how much i enjoyed just drawing lines you know and trying <laughs> to do it the way that he's doing it um there's another one that gave me the same kind of vibes where it was like uh, these little practices and um it was a uh, Gonzalo Carcamo's watercolor workout course and mm. in the very beginning you're making a circle you're making another circle overlap that circle and the way that you see him do it it's like oh this is so easy and then you try it yourself and it's so hard to make a perfect <laughs> you know watercolor circle with no stain you know it's just even perfect everywhere um, yeah, I'm sure Noah could probably contest to that. She does a lot of watercolors. It's hard. It's hard, right? It's hard to make yeah. just a just a very even shape. Yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes like these very technical mini exercises that you know. Sometimes you just don't have the patience to it, but in a sense, it's like meditation. Mm -hmm. So you have to get into the zone of it. I love it because it's like, it's very relaxing. Uh, yeah, but you I have to love it. the frustration as well. I love the frustration. I love frustration. I love drawing these things that are super frustrating to draw, <laughs> like right now. I don't know if it's you who told me that. Uh, but there's a sentence that it keeps like, I, I love repeating to myself, frustration is meaning that you're actually learning, you're actively learning. I feel like I've said those things before, but I also feel like I probably read that somewhere as well. I'm not sure. There's, cause like, it sounds very familiar. Okay, so next, five-minute pose starting now. This is number mm. three. Wow. Well, pose just because it's like completely profile, but there's a, a twist, or not a twist, like a, a bend in his torso. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I think I cut you off. Uh, it's okay. Something. It wasn't important. I forgot it already.
I think for the um, 10 minute poses, I'm going to try to do something more stylized this time. I was reading in the comments. I hate reading comments, but um, <laughs> I hate catching myself reading comments, I guess. But I, I was reading these comments the last time. I think this is like for um, the board, uh, board sports one. Mm. And somebody was like, well, I love how Massey keeps changing all of her styles, like approaches, like with everything. And I'm like, I want to change <laughs> styles too. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Keeping you. Keeping me motivated. Challenging you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but it's a it, it's always wonderful to see when you get when Masse gets good comments. I'm always so happy to see that. Uh, Keep them coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just makes me so proud of like how far you've come and over these years and everything. Oh. It's killing it now. All right, about two minutes left, this one. Curious to hear in the comments too if there's any other climbers, artist climbers out there. Yeah. Did you know that? I feel like it's a growing sport. Did you know that person, um, Stevie? I forget her last name, but she. Oh, um, Stevie Lu. Uh, yes, I know who you're talking about. She's on the West End, West Coast, and she does like car uh, van camping. Yeah. Uh, where she lives in or something like that and she does all these wonderful like uh illustrations she's she's an intense climber yeah well definitely it seems like she was living out of her van just obsessed with climbing for a while mm -hmm. living out of my van i don't know that's when i'm like okay <laughs> i'm done roughing it i don't know if i want to do that I've done van camping before. It's it's very fun. It's fun being on, uh, like, pretty much your bed is mobile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds, 30 seconds. This is when I just scan over everything and like just check for any other things that need a lot more attention. Try to get to those quickly. And we're done. Okay, fourth one minute pose. Here we go. This guy looks like he's posing. Is he like, <laughs> what is he doing there? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> he's definitely climbing rocks. <laughs> yeah. A good old straight line for line of action there, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to do something a bit more stylized here. Oops, let me start the timer. Okay, everybody got a few more seconds for this one.
any other topics people want to see uh, in the future? Or that you would want to see, Masse? Anybody? Um, I personally would love to see something with backgrounds or something if possible. Oh, okay, yeah. I could definitely get better at vehicles. Gesture drawing vehicles. I'd also love to do one involving like dancing. Mm. That could be really cool too. Oh, speaking of dancing, I watched Encanto last time we talked about it, and I was like, ah, I should watch that. So good. Very it won good. the Golden Globes, I think, right? Ah, amazing. Yeah, I don't think the, like, is it my uh, imagination, or I don't think the Golden Globes was, um, was uh, on TV or something. Just kind of like happened in private or something. Oh, really? I, I don't oh. know. I, maybe I'm mistaken. But I didn't hear much about it until it was like over. And there's a question from Lisa. Um, do you have any tips on stylization or exaggerating these poses without losing the essence of the pose? Oh. Um, stylization, I feel like, is really, for me anyways, it's about really understanding your subject so you can get to the root of it. And then from there, I start to reconstruct something with the essence of you know, whatever the root of that subject is. So for example, say it's hands, right? Hands, what's the root of hands? Generally, they're grabbers. They're grabbers of things. So if I'm gonna stylize that, you know, I might change proportions and such, but like say the padding on that claw or that machine that I ended up doing or the stylized hand that I ended up doing, um, it would generally, it would have padding, a lot more padding on the, uh, the palm side. You know, it makes sense. Because that's where you would want to put the padding if it was a grabber of things. You know, and just kind of using the, getting down to the core of what it is that you're observing, what it is that you want to draw, and then stylizing that. I hope that answers your question, Lisa. I see her here in the voice as well. Thirty seconds, everybody. This one's actually turning out pretty good for me, I think. Mm -hmm. I like how contrasting yours is, though. Yours is definitely yeah. a lot more graphic, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was thinking, like, oh, this image is, like, such a dark, um, you know, there's such a dark silhouette. So I thought it'd be fun to just kind of like look at it from that point of view. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then separating the values. Because like, um, I guess for that one, it was mainly like looking at the negative shapes rather than like finding like every specific like anatomical detail. Mm -hmm. That's great. <clears throat> I 
I wasn't doing that at all. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, I went anatomical, um, which just goes to show how important it is to take some time in the beginning, think about what it is <laughs> you want to achieve here. So now that Masaya has said that, my next one, I'm like looking at it as a shape, you know. Some poses are better, mm -hmm. kind of like more <laughs> suited for that, like thinking about it as a shape. Mm -hmm. It's also like a way to exercise your brain to <clears throat> look for those things as well. But it's kind of cool that we were able to show like two different approaches for the audience. Yeah. It's funny because I was literally just doing like a workshop <laughs> about about um, the block in kind of method. Uh, I think last week or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know why. I because I was just, I was thinking about stylizing stuff, and then I, you know, and that kind of took over all my thinking. This one I was thinking about blocking, so I stopped thinking about stylizing. Next one. Next one, I'll think of both. And that's a, the other great kind of practice with life drawing too, right? You like you notice your your strengths, your weaknesses, and you start thinking about how to apply it for that next pose. Mm -hmm. totally agree. Uh, there's a question from Max on Discord. Um, they are wondering if you followed specific instructors in the way uh, you guys do figure drawing. Not me. I did four years of drawing people on the subways every Sunday and then I, I developed my style for anatomy I would uh, Bridgman was a good one but I guess for figure drawing in general yeah going to actual life drawing helped And there's a, a thank you guys. And and there's a comment on Slido. Um, uh, they said um, Scott Wil Williamson. As a personal trainer, I would like to see weightlifting or fitness poses. Oh, nice. Mm. That could be fun. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. I'm sure every you know anatomy nut <laughs> would love to do a session like that. I think that's my favorite suggestion so far. But keep them coming, everybody. I'm definitely listening. Okay, 90 seconds left. I think it could be interesting with the anticipation. Uh, I remember, was it, I think it was with Massey when she was drawing uh, bowling, someone bowling, I guess? was also in like movement which is nice <laughs> okay yeah I'll, I'll uh look for that i'll think about that for um future streams that's a that's one i'm definitely gonna do weightlifting that sounds like so much fun gymnastics might be over or contortionists oh. might be a really weird one to do, right? <laughs> that would be uh, <laughs> confusing. It's like, sure. I swear, they, they look like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my gesture. <laughs> 20 seconds. Yeah. This one I like, too. It is really neat seeing the two different styles side by side, the two different approaches side by side. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm fully happy with this just because I was uh, kind of experimenting. It's a fun approach. Okay, so now we're rounding the bend. 
10 minute poses. Here's the first one starting now. Mm. Nice angle on those arms. We're not looking for easy, easy wins here. We're looking yeah, to this one's a, get better. Quite a challenge. Yeah. We're looking to challenge ourselves. There's another suggestion from Slido. We sure. would love to see valet. 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 Valet? Like valet yes. parking? <laughs> no, ba valet. Like oh, ballet. Sorry. Ba <laughs> I, I heard Val, my, Valley. My pronunciation, I try. No, uh, it's me, it's me, sorry. <laughs> Valley parking could be interesting. <laughs> that, that could be interesting. That's for oh. sure interesting. <laughs> that would be a good expression. The expressions of the valleys, that would be a good study. <laughs> Tossing the keys. Getting in the car. <laughs> Car chases. Car chases. <laughs> yeah, other suggestion from someone from Discord, Max. Uh, would be cool to do something with music directors while playing because their maybe their movement with their arms or. Oh, music directors. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that, but. I could, it could you be know, very stiff, maybe. Like I the, like the idea of performers, like, you know, mm -hmm. musicians, performers, different musicians playing different instruments or performers, you know, singing their hearts out. That would be really fun. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's like, you know, performers that people like. I remember when we were doing that Nighty Mac, uh, and where the subject was somebody from um, Black Pink. You remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was yeah. like Jisoo or something. And a lot of people were like, oh my gosh. I don't know. Sorry. Oh, that, I don't know that, these people, that was... everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Lisa. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's very big now. She's like. Yeah, I saw a video of her at at uh, Fashion Week in Paris, and mm. it was just like a giant mob just waiting for her. She couldn't even leave with the other celebrities. You know, she had to wait. So it's just <laughs> yeah, so chaotic. I can imagine. Yeah. I'm glad K-pop is uh, popular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, if I can suggest a subject, yeah, uh, because I'm terrified of it. Ocean creatures. Ocean be creatures. There's whales, sharks, um, jellyfish. I don't know. There's so many weird creatures. If they can, that so unique shapes in there. That I think it can be fun. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nico. Oh, you're welcome. It's a good one. There's another one from Slido, which I really like, is uh, horse uh, riding uh, ch challenge. Ooh, that's definitely challenging two that's, subjects. Yeah, <laughs> then you're dealing with two it, things yeah. having very specific uh, relationships with each other. Um, you yeah. know, I'm down yeah, for it, but <laughs> I think a lot of people yeah. will suffer. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Me. <laughs> Yeah, just drawing horses itself is already like a very big challenge because horses, oh man. I remember in life drawing, um, our, our teacher said like, if you can learn how to draw a horse, then you can almost draw anything. Because like, <laughs> horses is one of the more challenging uh, animals to draw. Oh, and, which teacher was this? Um, I... I think Thurman mentioned that, and also a different teacher mentioned that. Oh, okay. I think it was George. Because I do George. remember there was a teacher when I was teaching at Sheridan, and she had horses or something. She had a horse. Mm. I was wondering if it was that one. Uh, but, okay. No, it was, it was probably someone else. 
Uh, man, this exaggeration is not working. I'm going to delete this. It would be nice to have uh, some martial arts. Yeah. Mm. We should get Jonathan Hardesty on here and do some sketching with us if we do martial arts. Since he's, Maybe he has some photos. <laughs> he's, well, he's just so into martial arts, you know? Yeah, I'd love to learn more about martial arts. Or Manny uh, Crasco. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. And someone on Discord suggested um, different type of bodies, maybe like plus size models, and they love how to see uh, skin oh. and fat folds. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. Yeah, that sounds great. I just gotta think is that the topic? Different bodies? Plus size, maybe? Or it's just maybe. strictly like um that subject plus size not uh, any other types of bodies oh i see i see hmm. can i make a suggestion there's um a group of um dancers that are um called i think they call dv8 and they are specifically like having people with different body types so it could be like really, really cool to see like a plus size dancer. Mm -hmm. I love the idea. It also, like older people, different ages is also really interesting. Mm -hmm. Younger people to older people, especially the extremes, <laughs> like really like newborn or something like the little toddler to like old <laughs> you know like seen some shit <laughs> it's been around for a long time that could be really interesting too mm -hmm. two and a half minutes left I have the same shoes as him. There's a question from si Slido, Sergio, um, ask, is asking, there's much talk of uh, studying from nature is better than studying, uh, than using photographs. Mm -hmm. uh, photographs. What would be the advantage of drawing from life? Uh, there's huge advantages of drawing from life. When you draw from life, you have to filter, right? Here, we don't have to really filter nearly as much, uh, you know, filtering things out. What do you want to concentrate on? What do you want to do? Um, but in life, you know, you got to not just filter, but then you also have to design because you're getting just like the widest range of values, of colors, of everything, um, and then what do you focus on? You, you know, there's, there's so much more to learn from life. Uh, however, it's hard. It's uh, a lot of times, many of these things are harder to learn from life than to learn from a photograph. For example, mm -hmm. try, you know, drawing somebody rock climbing when they're actually rock climbing <laughs> you know you're not gonna have like any ability to look at things very carefully and going what are they doing exactly with their fingers there how are they doing you know how are they holding themselves up like this and stuff like that because mm -hmm. it just goes by yeah but definitely it benefits to both and like real life, you can kind of like move and like something completely changes or you're able to see something at a better angle. So I guess it also depends you're looking to I like take both. away from it. I like doing yeah, both. Yeah, me too, me too. You know, I a little balance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you sketch something, you go through a session, six seconds left 
go through a session and it's great, whatever. And then you go through a session of just looking at photographs and doing the photograph thing. And then you learn even more, you know, and so on and so forth. And sometimes things aren't clear in photographs. Okay, mm -hmm. time's up. Next 10 minute pose. You know, breathe a sigh of relief, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I threw in one of these, okay? So we could do a really awesome drawing here. Um, this person's right side up, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. a bit more standard. Oops, sorry. Okay. Time went by so quick with this one. This is already our second 10 minute pose. Five 10 minute poses and we're done. And for those that are listening from YouTube or something like that, come join the Lightbox Expo Discord. You know, come join in live with the rest of the gang and uh, mm -hmm. sketch with everybody. It's so much easier to you know, do art when you have a network of people, a community to rely on. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. And I think um, our moderators also like set up a magma board for some people to draw on so that everyone can draw together. That's really fun to see as well. Oh, awesome. I think, right, Patricia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> cool. Yeah, I believe Nico, Nico. Nico is sharing it right. Nico's actually sharing mm. it right now. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Nico. Thanks, everybody. Our mods are literally the best. The best. The same with our community. We actually get a lot of compliments on, um, you know, the community on Lightbox Expo Discord. And that's really heavily, if not all, because of the, the mods that help to um, make it such a safe, fun place. So big shouts out to all the Discord mods. You guys are great. <laughs> I think it helps that we have an amazing community, so then we can choose mods from an amazing community, uh -huh. which is amazing. <laughs> Some of us need bullied into doing it, but then once you're here, that's us. <laughs> now that Patricia spent a good week forcing me to do this, and man, I love it. The community here are just brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. So oh, that's awesome. Makes such a difference. Yeah. I think coerced was the word you shared on Instagram, right? <laughs> Much better phrase. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Um, and we started small, really, in two stream. Mm -hmm. Like in the day, with Kofi and the... Yeah, it's really fun. I'm really happy... Uh, um, the team and yeah thank you guys for helping where is Kofi Amazing. these days is Kofi here I feel like I, I haven't seen him for a while or heard from him for a while yeah I'm here oh I'm here. there you are <laughs> yeah hey Kofi <laughs> how you doing Bobby <laughs> doing great awesome. great to hear from you yeah. lovely and I also wanted to give a huge shout out to Patricia and Nell for holding the this whole team down, the team of mods. They've been really awesome. And yeah, I just wanted to thank them on behalf of us all. Mm -hmm. mm. Absolutely. Uh, we appreciate you even more. <laughs> awesome. It's 
good vibes, doing some drawing together. Doesn't get much better than this. There's a question uh, on Discord. Um, it's not about the cha challenge that you're doing now, um, but they're curious why the Schoolism website logo is a chameleon. Oh, um, because when when we first started the studio, you know, the Schoolism is owned by Imaginism Studios. That's our studio. And when we started the studio, um, we wanted to have a logo or something where it really talked about what we do. We don't just paint and draw anything. We specialize in things that take imagination, whimsical, fantastical things a lot of times. Um, and you know how, like, there's some things in life, when you look at them, they don't look real. They still don't look real. One is a sloth. I feel like when you look at footage of a sloth, it doesn't look real. It looks like a Muppet or something. Mm. And the other is a chameleon. And so that's why it's a chameleon. Also, we chose a chameleon because we said, okay, well, you know, some artists, they thrive on developing a style and honing in on that style and making it really, really great. And it works out very, very well for them. Well, we're not as interested in that. We're interested in more like creating a style for the client. You know, so it's like you come into our shop. It's not to get one of our um, kind of like trademark jackets that everybody knows, you know, that style that everybody knows. No, it's more like you come into our shop we look you over and we go, okay, you got those pants, you got that shirt, let's design a jacket for your outfit, in other words. So let's design a style for your film, right? And chameleons, they can go from kind of like style to style. You know what I mean, different colors, mm -hmm. but... And that's why. The little side story to that was um, when we were coming up with the name and coming up with that stuff, we also called it Imaginism Studios, not because we e do a lot of very imaginative things or imaginative jobs, but because in the very beginning, it was kind of like an imaginary studio. It's a studio because we say it's a studio, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that was the other little inside joke that we'd have. That's awesome. You spoke it into being. Yeah. Yeah. It's like once you believe. Totally. I remember when I started um, the studio and started teaching and stuff like that, there was this artist, uh, you know, one of the students um, in Sheridan heard that I was teaching. I, I like this person's paintings. You know, I like this person's art, R really respected what he does. He, he gave me an art book. He gave me a painting book, you know. He was like, if you're going to teach, if you're going to start your own studio, you sh you know, it's pretty much like you should learn how to paint. You know what I mean? Like, that was really harsh. Mm. I don't know why I just thought of that. But maybe, uh, y you know why I, th I thought of that? Because, like, not just art is hard, but the road to being an artist is hard because you deal with these kind of things in one form or another, whether it's, like your own fellow artist kind of trying to pull you down or other things outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's all good, you know. The real key to it is just being okay with it, being okay with whatever comes your way and still marching forward. Sometimes you just need a, somebody to point you in the right direction, right? 
Here's a very quick, crazy story for you. Masay, my climbing, my climbing buddy, the other day I was telling you about, his brother works out in Afghanistan with the army. He took, um, he took him climbing, right? So this guy's like hard as nails. It works out with, you know, he's in armored Humvees most of the time. So Ewan takes him climbing. They get halfway through the climb. And at one point, um, Magnus just turns to Ewan and he goes, I just need to know that we are safe and that everything's in control. And Ewan, who's been ice climbing for years, like just turns out, and he almost made a joke of it because he was like, he was like, come on, man, like you're hard as nails. You know what's going on. You've known how to do this. But he looked at him and he could see that he was like white as a sheet. And he literally in that moment just had to be like, everything's fine. Everything's in control. And I think, you know, like you're, you're right, Bobby. Some, you know, sometimes like somebody hands you something. It's like, man, you, you trying to take the mic here. But actually other times you do just need somebody to be like, Everything, everything be all right. We're, we're, we're pointing in the right direction. Which is, uh, again, why I love this community. Like, there's so many folk that you just get to bounce ideas off and be like, yeah, yeah, now we did it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Ewan's a madman, though. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's nuts. Many crazy stories, Bobby, you know that. <laughs> yeah. While we're on the topic of professional uh, stuff, um, how would you get started uh, looking at careers in art? Like, I'm a college student. Like, actually get going with a career eventually or like... Mm -hmm. How do you get started? Well, do you know what you want to do yet? Or is it just like, well, something in art? I don't know. Uh, I, I'd love to do something with the studio. All I know is that I want to do something studio work, so like game dev or something, or not like just art, uh, like design, a design and art. Mm. Design in art. I, I think the first step is always like um, coming up with a goal. I think like that. That's my thing. You don't have to lock into that goal and you can't do anything else later. But just to have some sort of target, even if you change the target later, it's fine. Um, so that's, that'd be the first thing. And the more specific you are, uh, generally the more effective that becomes. You know, just like, it's like if you are to go fishing and you don't know what kind of fish you're trying to get, versus a person going fishing trying to get a largemouth bass you know like they'll have a much higher chance of getting that than you getting any kind of good fish i would think you know what i mean so um yeah i mean like uh, i guess the best way to put it like i want to do something with game design i want to make something oh, that okay. impact people and i want to be able to make a character that people can resonate with or something just like i, I want to be able to create things for people to enjoy in like games and stuff okay gaming that gets more specific and then gaming also has like a million different types of games as well so then you'd want to kind of delve into that a bit too like something more realistic or something more cartoony uh, then all of a sudden that changes what you're going to be studying But generally, I, you know, I'm going to say it. I don't give a shit. I, I say get a schoolism subscription because it doesn't matter what kind of style or subject or whatever you want to do. You'll be able to have access to, you know, numerous courses um, where people are teaching you. You know, and it's all like you subscribe. There's no added kind of... Uh, cost you just get straight access and just start learning you know like uh if i was to do everything over again what i would do is i would concentrate way more on learning than producing the producing would come through learning you know so i would post stuff whatever but most of it is going to be coming through doing assignments either joining a class or giving myself assignments um, I think so much of the time for so many people is stalled 
you know, the progress is stalled because they're too kind of concerned about creating as opposed to learning. You know, after that, you know, if your stuff is good, you put it online, good stuff floats to the top. That's generally what happens, so I wouldn't be as concerned. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the other thing I would do is start to uh, research into the various companies, the various people that are in that industry. I was just about to suggest that, um, like, it's, it's good to definitely like, you know, figure out your own path, but it's also nice to see, like, figure out what has other artists, um, done, like, specific to the type of game industry that you want to go in. Is it like, um, like, AAA kind of video games, then look at people who work at, you know, like those big game companies like Ubisoft, there's one specific artist, see what they've done for their personal work. And I think usually people like to see like um, what they do for personal work because although it is good to cater you know, your portfolio to a specific type of studio and show things that have already been done, but then if it's already been done, they might already have that artist. So maybe it's nice to show like what else you can bring to the table. So, um, you know, as a guideline, maybe you can like look at what other people do and then kind of put your own, you know, flavors onto it. And whatever you enjoy, like just, you know, add that to your portfolio as well. Because people like to hire people who are, you know, passionate about something that they can bring into their project. It also gives a good kind of insight into like who who people are talking to as opposed to somebody with kind of like almost faceless, like doesn't have a personality. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like personality, you show your personality a little bit, maybe it's a little risky, but overall, I think it, it is more beneficial. This one's a fun um, angle. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like this from the top. No, I was just going to say, like, if and another great starting point is, like, maybe you can reach out to, um, like, there's also recruiter, recruiters that you can ask, like, you know, about these kind of questions because they are the ones who are looking at portfolios who will bring you to, like, that interview stage. So, um there's also that or like reaching out to artists that you like and you know just cold messaging them maybe they'll respond maybe not but like um, if you kind of reach out obviously you know in a nice way not just like hey how do you do this um, <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they will be like you know most artists are willing to help with those kinds of things do you answer those kind of questions I forgot to look into those, that co the message section. Mm. On purpose. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't worry. You don't have to. Ask I mean, them. I don't really <laughs> get that many many inquiries. I guess about that kind of stuff. Uh huh. Um. But if it's questions like what brush do you use, then I'm just like okay, <laughs> it's like an automatic like look away. Hmm. Oh, Bobby, I'm say. Hey. How you guys doing? I had a hey. question. Just just speaking about, um, you know, wanting to get into the business. I seen a meme that really spoke to me here recently, and it said, you know, I quit my 9 to 5 so I could end up working 24-7. <laughs> I 
In, and from somebody that would love to eventually quit his nine to five, could you guys maybe, you know, speak about some of your uh, personal experiences and what it is expected in the art industry? Uh, regarding, As, regarding you know, long hours or like how hard is like obviously rewarding doing something you love, but the unknown of like the grueling hours or the uh, you know the revisits and the mm. things to that nature. Like how, like what would your hours be in a typical on a typical job, or is there anything like that, or do you set your own? Here's kind of like my hot take on that. You know, in the beginning, yeah, we did more hours. I did more hours. I'm sure Masse probably did more hours too, um, because we're not as good as we are now. Like that, like as straightforward as that sounds, you know, like, um, here, let me do the next pose here. Okay. So, um, if I don't need to, it, it's like in the beginning, if it takes me longer to paint, uh, the same kind of level as somebody that's getting, that, that is at the exact same position as me, um, then yeah, like, I'm not sure what you, you, whoever's listening should do, but for me, I feel like I need to spend longer hours until I get better so that I'm not taking as long to do the same thing as the next person. Um, and that's the goal. And then when I got to that level, then I started doing regular hours, you know, and that's the thing though. You have to consciously go, okay, dial it back now because I'm faster. And this was the goal to get to this level. It's not, the goal is not to get to this level and do the same kind of hours. Um, and then now I feel like I'm a, quite a bit faster again. So now I do even less hours. Uh, for whatever project because I'll just paint my face off and just keep going like as quick as I can and then I'll, I'll just you know take it easy uh, I think that's the difficult thing with doing freelance I'm sure Masse can speak to this as well freelance you're not on the clock you don't see employees leave and then you go okay I'm done for the day right you go you look at your file you're painting and you go, how much did I do? What did I get accomplished? And then you go, uh, am I going to feel okay handing this in? Right? That's kind of like how, what we go through, right, Masse? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if it's not mm -hmm. enough, then what do you end up doing? You end up doing more work, generally. <laughs> it's not the right thing to do, but also at the same time, it's like, I don't know if like just stopping work is the right thing to do, especially you're trying, you're starting off, you're slower, but you got the opportunity. You know, are you telling me the right thing to do is to spend the same amount of time as the next person um, that's faster than you? I don't know, you know, like I know this isn't, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm voluntarily kind of putting a target on my back because there's so much talk about like health and I talk about that as well a lot you know or not overworking there's a lot of talk about that as well and I absolutely agree but I, I don't think it's as black and white as people may think yeah and I think um also that saying maybe it also revolves around like you they say that because you you become a business person, you become a businessman or woman because um, once you start doing that thing that you want to get into, you kind of have to like yeah hone your skills, get faster. Um, when there's like a freelance project, you kind of have to put in that extra hours, um, and then it's like you gotta also kind of be uh, a social media person by posting your stuff online um, and then you gotta like keep getting better because there's always better people coming out um, so I think 
like although it does sound scary it's like your nine to like your eight hour job has become like a 24 hour job um it's it's one of those cheesy sayings like if you love what you do you won't really think of it as work but definitely it's a lot of a lot more time that you have to think about it because it's not just about this job that's paying you it's more about like how to hone your craft so um yeah it's it's i think it, but yeah it's also like a fine balance of like doing art but also living your own life yeah i feel like uh, freelance um if you do it well it's more rewarding uh but mm -hmm. it's harder it's more challenging because you're in control of so many more things there's so many <laughs> less factors when you're working in a studio uh like when do you get off of work? Well, generally you get off of work at this time because everybody else is. And even if you finish nothing that day, everybody knows that you were there at your desk, sitting there trying to figure something out. Um, so in the end of the day, nobody's upset at you for not actually accomplishing anything, right? If it's freelance, they haven't watched you and what you did throughout the day they don't know if you've been working or not and you know this so there's that extra added pressure uh, to produce which a lot of times leads to extra hours mm -hmm. so look out for that you don't want to you want to be very um, aware of that trap especially when everybody you know what here's the other thing uh, online everybody not everybody, but a lot of people, they'll put up a painting and they'll go, did this in two hours, right? And you're like, uh, this would take me so long, you know? Um, and I do the same thing. Like, I usually don't post how long it took me, but yeah, sometimes when I do post, yeah, this took me four hours or whatever. But if it was a job, that may take me two weeks, Right, because when I do something for myself and I started off thinking the idea is going to be a, a mutated chicken and then I keep painting and it ends up being a flock of geese or something like that, it's fine. It's just for me. Right? When you're working as a freelancer, you're doing specific things for people with specific goals in mind. And so that takes a lot longer. Does that ever mess with you? Like uh, when you see, like I, I would see um, Sparth, like one of the best freaking painters out there, post something and says, half an hour. I'm like, what? You know, it's almost, it almost <laughs> makes you want to just quit. Seeing those are tough and I know it can be very discouraging for some people. I think it's um, also important to see like, um, like what, what stage are they in their career? Have they been, are they like a veteran? Then, okay, it makes sense that they're such a fast painter because the job requires them to be fast. So, um, and then you can also analyze like, oh, does this look more like um, a study piece or is it like, is it about brush economy? Maybe that's why it's really fast. Um, and then it's also like, what other tools have they included in, into it? Like, it, did they include like a 3D <clears throat> um, render and then paint it on top? So I'm not dis like, you know, discrediting those artists who are able to do that. It's kind of like um, thinking like, it is impressive, but you know, they kind of work up to that stage and also like is this something that you also want to do it does it benefit like does it help you get to that us um the goal to get to your goal a lot faster also um oh. it's my bad i forgot to turn on the timer how much time do you think we have left i'll set it to that uh oh, i've kind of just been like <laughs> noodling <laughs> around Okay. Because we've been talking a bit more. So I'm okay with moving on. I'm going to say 
two minutes, okay? Two minutes to finish it off, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, I just wanted to add to the um, last question you were answering about the time and, like, um, quitting your nap after, what, 24 hours? Sure. Um, it's not... Not that I really have any experience in this area, but I just, I did want to say how, how like every um, entrepreneurial seminar I've visited, they all say the same thing. Like when you're starting your own business, how you're always on the clock. Uh-huh. Um, so it's not anything exclusive to artwork, really. Oh, for sure. Well, I started an art business. What do you think my hours were <laughs> in the beginning? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was nuts. Also, I had a question about the um, answer you answered, the question you answered before um, the last question. When you mentioned like making sure you feel that like having a personality on your social media is important, do you mean like personal photos and whatnot? Or do you mean like a um, specific style to your artwork? No, like have an opinion, have, a, have things that you like, uh, you know, show what you like, show what yeah, I don't. I don't think you have to show what you don't like, but show what you like. That's uh, what I mean by opinion. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Eleven seconds. There we go. Uh. <laughs> Last little bit. Not okay, here we go. Next one. Last one, everybody. Last 10 minute pose starting now. I also want to say thank you for all the suggestions. Uh, we had like a couple of funny ones in the <laughs> Elvis live chat. Really? <laughs> yeah. There, there's one. This actually came from Nell. Uh, action movie stars running would be hilarious. Uh, maybe too much details, but you have like those, you know, action man running face. Yeah. <laughs> that would be oh, fun. that's so good. Tom Cruise, The Rock. Yeah, Tom Cruise running. Yeah. I was just about to say Tom Cruise running. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For some reason, I thought all the way back to Angelina Jolie and uh, Tomb Raider doing a little run. Um, who else is there? Yeah, that's a funny so, one. I like that. So funny how everyone immediately thinks of Tom Cruise as the first suggestion in your head. <laughs> he's so great when he, his face, when he's running and he's intense. <laughs> he means business. Love it. I love it. Indiana Jones and the Boulder. Oh yeah, classic, <laughs> classic. That's a great one. Ace Ventura, Nature Calls. You one. might be alone on that one. I don't know. I, I don't remember him running much in that one. It, it was the ending scene. He was running, and they paused a frame, and then roll credits. Oh. <laughs> I got you. It's pretty good. For some reason, I start to think of uh, Austin Powers, you know, when he does the dance in the beginning of the movie. And then everybody starts oh. doing like a flash dance kind of flash mob. That'd be a funny one, too. You could also get some good horror movie ones, too. Just like intense fear in someone's face. That's also a good one. Oh, jeez. We're saving that one for October. <laughs> it would be perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep that one in mind. I'm not as Especially into, easy. like, gory stuff. Or, like... But, yeah. I'm sure we could find some great expressions. Oh, my goodness. These people just scared shitless. Man, I'm drawing way too slow here. Okay. Time to pick it up. I also want to compliment uh, the 90 minutes 
art family because uh, I've seen so many people that are joining from like first when you guys are started. Mm -hmm. For example, TC is a old 90 mecker. Hey, TC. <laughs> Thank you for joining again. Awesome. Thanks, Patricia. Yeah. OG. OG 90 mecker. <laughs> I think even a lot of our mods are OG 90 makers, like almost, almost, almost the entire team, I think. <laughs> 90 makers, I like that. <laughs> yeah, you could be the next one. <laughs> we should make a t-shirt. <laughs> I survived the 90 makers. <laughs> 90 makers, unite. Some people even say take these as classes rather than challenges. They just learn so much. Oh yeah. Well, that's how I'm kind of thinking about this. Uh, you know, these life drawing classes. You know, or I just said class, because that's exactly how I think about it. It feels like back in college when I'd go to life drawing regularly. It's great. Except we could actually talk in a life drawing mm, class, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> can't say anything. That was my favorite, favorite subject in school, in art Me college. Me too. Uh, I love going after school hours for like an extra three hours of life drawing. <laughs> yeah, me too. Loved it. I think... Um, you know what uh so sorry just to bring back that thing about like working for 24 hours mm. i think for me the reason why i like so i do a lot of studies out, outside of work and like kind of just like try to take classes and stuff and the only reason why i keep doing that and like yes it's tiring yes it kind of you know sucks sometimes but i think it's like once you learn that there's like once you want to learn about something then you're more willing to spend your time on that so I think um, it becomes much easier when you start like opening your eyes to certain things and you're like, oh my gosh, like I want to learn how to do that. And then so, you know, you put yourself up into that like um, mindset and then it becomes less work, but more fun. So, you know, and it's like, there's also a lot of stuff to learn, so it can be overwhelming, but it's, it's like taking little steps and figuring out like, okay, Ultimately, I want to be able to paint like this, but right now I just need to focus on values because that, that's like one of the core fundamentals. So, you know, it's just like, and then maybe putting like milestones or like uh, goals of like, maybe this week I'm only going to focus on this or maybe even longer, like this whole month I'm going to work on this. And then you'll see how like, you know, fast you improve just by learning that one thing. So, yeah. You know, a uh, common question I would ask people before is like, how do you organize your files, right? And and um, nobody had a good answer uh, <laughs> out of everybody I interviewed and asked and such. Nowadays, I organize my files by the um, by the year. Mm, so yeah, all of my art, I just put it into the two thousand and two folder now. Or 22 folder, ah. <laughs> you know, and then why? Because of the same kind of reason that you were just saying, Masei. Like, I like being able to look back and going, okay, that's what I did that year. And this is what I did this year. What's the difference? How have I improved? How have I changed? Was there any change? Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's kind of like a journal. Mm-hmm. And you generally remember what you do that year. So it's like, if you ever want to refer back to a certain piece, then you know exactly which year to go to. Yeah, like you have, a, or at least you know, okay, I painted this before that, right? Like a lot of times that would happen too. So if you see mm -hmm. some file in the folder where you're like, well, yeah, I haven't, I didn't paint this thing yet. Maybe it's in the folder before this. Mm -hmm. Like that kind of thing. Yeah, and I did, you know, I, I want to mention, like, I love what I'm doing. 
I know I've been kind of emphasizing, oh, this is hard, that's hard, this is hard, this is hard. It, it is hard, but um, it's very, very doable. Just show up. That's, that's kind of like the hardest thing about art, I think, is the mental game. Because there's so much in there, you know, like, how's that person doing? Well, that person started when I started. How come that person's so much better than me now? Or, you know, you, people used to call you and now they don't. Did the, the, the industry forget about you? You know, is your career over? No, it's not. It's just a low. You know, stay in there. Keep going. Keep doing stuff. People will call you. And that's, these are like the toughest things about being an artist. It's not actually, you know, like um, getting good, I would think. Because getting good, you just need to learn. You just need to take classes. You just need to learn from people that are better than you as opposed to just trying to draw a person every single day and, you know. <laughs> No instruction, no goals, no new information. It doesn't make sense. There's a question on Slido, uh, and it's, it correlates a bit what you're, you're telling now. Um, and they're asking how to use reference properly um, so that you don't copy it, but actually, you know, learn the information from it. Mm. Well, using reference properly i just wanted to just like make sure we answer this correctly by just saying um there's many w different ways to use reference properly you could use it properly by just copying the heck out of it you know but i know what this person is saying y you know you want to be able to do something that um yeah, I think for their original artwork. So yeah, maybe, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if it's original artwork, you, you want to, and since this is the last pose, I'm just going to keep going a little bit past the timer here. Um, yeah, you want to get into the focus of creating as opposed to copying, for sure. So when you're using your reference, analyze it, figure out what's behind that Thing or inside that bag or behind those muscles to the bones and all that stuff and analyze it, right? And then when you're um, sketching, I generally, I don't, if I'm doing completely like um, creative kind of thinking and really working on my creative drawing, uh, I don't measure angles. Instead, what I do is I think about them everything in kind of like word descriptions, right? So the person is leaning backwards. They have their um, left foot out more than their right foot. There's more pressure on that, right? So they're leaning a bit more on their left foot. Uh, they are grabbing the rope with medium strength with the uh, right arm. You know, and not very much strength at all with the left arm. And then I use these, you know, these, uh, these verbal descriptions to create my image so that my image describes those verbal descriptions. Then you're truly creating. And that's the same thing when you're working on a, like a movie. You get a script. You read the script. And then you do the descriptions of what's in the script. Right, it's just replace the script with a with some reference. And there you go. Beautiful, Massey. Wow, it looks like a little sculpture over there. Uh, not looking at it too, too closely, but oh yeah. It's nice when you end off your um, the last drawing as like one of your better ones, you know. <laughs> Feel like yeah. got some stuff done, accomplished something. Okay. 
Any other questions before we uh, kind of conclude today's session here? Um, I, I just want to have a, uh, this, this tip from Nadia in the LVX Discord uh, chat. There's a book called Joy at Work by Marie Kondo about tidying files. <laughs> so oh. I didn't know that she did that as well, uh, but it could be worth to check it out. Yeah, I am totally going to pick that up and, and uh, check it out today. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Nadia. <laughs> Thank you, Nadia. Awesome. You're a fan, aren't you? Missy? I kind of, oh yeah, she changed my life. <laughs> you threw out all sorts of stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I remember your your room became so clean mm, uh, yeah, at the studio. Like, yeah. It's um, just the essentials. <laughs> Let me know when you're good. Yep, I'm pretty much good whenever. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, you're painting in clouds and stuff. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to all of the community that ended up showing up in the Lightbox Expo Discord week after week. Show up next week, same time, same channel. We're going to be doing rabbits next week. That's going to be really fun. And a huge, huge, you know, big, gigantic shout out to all our wonderful uh, moderators and our Lightbox Expo Discord. And the biggest thank you goes to my wonderful co-host. You know, front stage, full, like, if you screw up, everybody sees it. <laughs> thank you so much, Masay, oh, yeah. for always, you know, taking on the challenge with me and uh, drawing with me each week. Yeah, for sure. It's always a pleasure. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. And... Uh, Hope to see many of you for Noah Kolchak's uh, Schoolism webinar for Schoolism subscribers this Saturday. Take care, everybody.